Sometimes, no matter how hard we try, we forget things. We forget to wish someone a happy birthday. We forget someone's name. We forget a whole ream of facts in the middle of an exam. Why? And what can we do about it? Even though long-term memory is thought to have unlimited capacity and last a lifetime, we still forget things. So, if the theory about long-term memory is right, that means all those things we forget never got there. We haven't forgotten. The memory doesn't exist. Perhaps, but not necessarily. We're going to look at a couple of explanations presented by psychologists for the conundrum of why we can't remember. The first explanation is interference. Something interfered with your memory, making it harder to reliably recall. There are two types of interference, proactive and retroactive. Proactive interference is where something you learn first blocks your ability to remember something new that comes later. For example, Underwood in 1957 found that when asked to memorize word lists, Participants perform worse the more lists they're asked to memorize. Why? Well, Underwood says that each list proactively reduces the participant's performance on future lists. Retroactive interference, on the other hand, is when new information prohibits the ability to recall old information. Retroactive interference was studied as early as 1900 when Miller and Pilsecker had participants learn a list of nonsense syllables and then attempt to recall them after a retention interval. Participants who were provided with a task to do within the retention interval performed worse on the recall task, possibly because the new information being attended to in the interval task retroactively interfered with the participant's memory of the nonsense syllables they'd been trying to memorize in the first place. Alternatively, forgetting might be due to a retrieval failure within long-term memory. Whereas interference generally prevents a piece of information from ever reaching long-term memory by interrupting the rehearsal process, the following reasons for forgetting are examples of why we might not be able to remember something that we know is in there somewhere. Limitations on accessing information in long-term memory are often put down to the way the information was encoded at the point of learning. The encoding specificity principle presented by Tolving and Thompson in 1973 suggests that memories are most readily retrievable if other contextual information remains consistent between the two moments in time. In the run-up to presenting the theory, Tolving conducted some research with Pearlstone to demonstrate that memory is strengthened by additional cues. They gave participants 48 words to learn from 12 thematic categories. Each word was presented alongside its category, so participants would have had a list that looked like fish, cod, fish, haddock, fruit, apple, fruit, orange. For recall, the participants were divided into two groups. One was asked to free recall as much as they could, whilst the other group were prompted with the category names. Free recallers were able to recall 40% of the words on average, whereas those in the queued recall group were able to recall 60% of the words. Clearly, having an additional cue to latch onto makes a big difference because it was the same list of words and nobody knew which group they were going to end up in ahead of time. So what sort of cues exist in real life that might affect our ability to retrieve a memory? Well, actually, loads. Which is quite handy, really. The more, the better in this case. Ethel Abernethy found that students perform best in tests when taken in the same room as the original learning took place and in the presence of the original teacher. Conversely, completing a test in a different room with a different teacher invigilating presents the greatest challenges with regards to context-dependent forgetting. Pretty much like an exam hall. Oh, great. Godden and Badley's well-known study involving scuba divers supports Abernethy's findings. 
They found that scuba divers recalled word lists best when asked to recall them in the same setting as they'd originally learned the list in. If they were presented with the list underwater, that's where they recalled it most accurately. However, if they were presented with the list on dry land, no amount of sea turtles or clownfish was going to boost their recall. Place seems to matter. Finally, your mental place matters too. The mental state you're in at the point of learning is a retrieval cue in itself, and this is known as state-dependent forgetting. At the end of the 1960s, Goodwin et al had participants learn a list of words when they were either sober or had had a few to drink. The drinking condition were required to drink about three times the drink driving limit, so let's hope that the researchers also paid for their cabs home. 24 hours later, participants were asked to recall the list of words. Half of each group returned to the same state of inebriation as they had been when learning the list, whilst the other half were required either not to drink anymore or to chug up, whatever they hadn't done the day before. Now, what we'd expect is that sober learners would recall most accurately when they're also sober at the point of recall, and they do. But the surprising result here is that drunk learners were able to recall almost as much as their sober counterparts, so long as they were drunk again at the time of recall. Both groups struggled to recall when in a different state from that which they'd first learned the words. Studies have shown similar effects with caffeine and general mood. When you're happy, happy memories abound. But when you're feeling down, those happy memories can seem locked away in an irretrievable chest. State-dependent forgetting is your reason why. Thank you for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did, give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Psychology Unlocked and hit that bell. That way you won't miss out on any of our upcoming videos. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.